1 plus a quarter plus 1 ninth plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over etc etc there's no way that they expect us to actually solve this and indeed when you look at the answer choices you see that they're ranges so the advice i give in my book for a question like this is to think about extremes so in one case i would pretend that all of these terms are just ones we have one plus one plus one plus one plus one ten of them so that would be ten that's one extreme where i'm kind of estimating or you know adjusting all of the fractions to kind of a, a, a top value and then on the other extreme, I would imagine that they're all equal to the smallest of them. So the smallest is 1 over 100. If you had 10 terms that are all 1 over 100, add them all together, you get 1 tenth. So that's the trick that I offer in my book. And that would mean that the correct answer is somewhere in between those two extremes. So somewhere in between 1 tenth and 10. But unfortunately, all of the answer choices are within that range. So that trick fails in its most basic form for this question. We're going to have to modify it a little bit. Right? We have to tweak it so that it can still help us solve this question. So uh, we're going to look at that right after this. So since our basic trick failed for this question, I would actually start adding up the first few terms uh, and then just kind of estimate the remaining terms. So here's what that would look like. I'd start with just one plus a quarter. So one plus a quarter, that's one and a quarter. The remaining eight terms are one ninth and then a bunch of terms smaller than one ninth. So if I pretend that they're all one ninth, so I've got eight of them left, right? There are eight terms remaining because I took care of the first two. If all eight terms were equal to one ninth, then altogether that's eight ninths. So we had already one and a quarter plus another eight ninths. That tells me that the answer has to be less than one and a quarter plus eight ninths, whatever that is. So it's just over two. So the answer is smaller than two point something. Unfortunately, that still leaves us with three answer choices, C, D, and E. So I'm going to have to go one more term in. So instead of just one plus a quarter, I'll say one plus a quarter plus one ninth. And then I'll pretend that the remaining seven terms are all equal to one over 16. So I have one plus a quarter plus one ninth. So that would be, I'm just going to approximate here and I'll call it like one and a third. It's, it's less than one and a half, that's for sure, because one plus a quarter plus a quarter would be one and a half, and we have one plus a quarter plus one ninth. So it's less than one and a half. Now, if the remaining seven terms were all one over 16, so I'm allowing them to kind of reach that higher value, uh, then altogether it would be seven over 16, which is just slightly under one half, because eight over 16 would be half, so 7 over 16, just under. So we had 1 plus a quarter plus a ninth, which is, as we said, less than 1 and a half, plus something that's just slightly under 1 half. Is it possible that we'd still be at 2 or more than 2? Well, remember, the 7 over 16, that's actually more than the true value of those last seven terms combined. So I have something that's obviously less than one and a half, again, one and a quarter and one ninth, so significantly less than one and a half. And then I have, in an extreme scenario where I pretend that all of the remaining terms are one over 16, I have seven over 16, which is just a fraction under one half. And at that point, I would feel very comfortable to pick E and move on to the next question. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.